for the first time is really a great privilege because we know that each of our young people really understands that the secrets of making peace in the world are somewhere hidden in the teachings of the Torah and in the spaces between the teachings in the possibilities for Midrash. And so uh, there is no person that is more appropriate than her great-grandfather, because not everybody's got a great-grandfather, and you have one. And what a one you have. He reminded me he's not just the great-grandfather, but he's the great-grandfather. <laughs> so if Pops would come forward, he's a great-grandfather to a lot of wonderful people. Um, I've gotten to name them. I've gotten to bar and bat mitzvah them. I've gotten to meet them. Um, he's also a grandfather to many wonderful people and a father. So I'm going to ask him to come over to the ark. We have to go to the ark. It's <laughs> <laughs> our ark. And as we take the Torah from the ark, we ask everyone to rise. <coughs>
Please be seated. Emily's portion comes from the Chalotecha, a wonderful portion in the Torah that has, as you can see, many, um, many areas of, of uh, interpretation in it. And Emily has worked very hard to understand this portion. It comes from the book of Numbers, and you can follow with her in the Hebrew or in the English um, in your service book. She's going to be reading the Moft here, the very end of her portion. And then we'll continue with her Haftor, the portion of the, the writings and the prophets that were chosen to complement the Torah portion by the rabbi. So I call you up for your first time publicly to be reading the Torah in front of all of these good people. And now you have all of the, the tools that you need to teach us and to be part of this people. Ta'amod Esther Asher Bat Benjamin Aharon Belea Sarah Habat Mitzvah Baruch Adonai Baruch Adonai Baruch Adonai Baruch Baruch but you saw Gamil Yam, he loosed the Mahane, she bad yami. Baham, the owner saw, I hear say, Gil Yam, Baha Nasu, ha am, me had say road. Baya Hanu, the midbar paran. And now we're going to be seated as uh, Emily greets to us her blessings and the portion of her Hav Torah from Zechariah. And again, we invite everyone to follow along in the Hebrew or in the English. Shachan <laughs> 
I'll add my hakodesh, Ubachar old Birushalayim, Hatkaba Sarmit Ne Adanoi, Kidne or Mimon Kadsho, Bayareni, Ed Yehoshua, Hakohain Hagado, O me, Leaf Name Allah Adanoi, Bahasatan, O me, Al Yumino, Lusit No. Bayomir Adonai, El Hasatan, Yigar Adonai, Baha Hasatan, Yigar Adonai, Baha, Habokhir Birushalayim, Halo, Ze Urmutsal Meyesh, Viho Shua, Hayalabush Begadim Soim, Val me leaf ne hamalach, Vayan vayomer, El haum dim le fanav le mor, Hasiru, Habagadim hat so ime a love, Vayomer e love, Rae hel varti me alecha avonecha, Vahal beish otcha machalat zot. Rama Yasimu Tsanif Tahor Al Rosho Vayasimu Hatsanif Hatahor Al Rosho Vayabishu Hu Begadim Umalach Adonai Omeid Vayad Malach Adonai Bihoshu Alemor Koamor Adonai Tzvaot Ibn Rachai Teleich Be'imet Mishmarti Tishmor Be'gam Ata Tadin Et Beiti Be'gam Tishmor Et Hatserai Be'natati Lecha Machim Be'in Ha'omdim Ha'ele Shemana Yehoshua Hakohen Hagado Ata Vareecha Hayoshvim Lefanecha Kian Shemofet Hema Kihini Mevi Erabdi Tzemach Kihine Ha'evin Asher Natati Livre Yehoshua Eleven achachi vayenayim Hinani mefateach pitucha Naum adonai tzvaot Umashti edavon ha'aratahi biyom echad Bayom ha'hu Naum adonai tzvaot Tikru ish el reyehu El tachat gefen el tachat Vayashav hamalach adover bi Vayireni kishashir yeor mishnato Vayomer elai mata roe Vomari tivihine menorad Zahav kula vagula rosha Vashiva ne roteha leha Shiva vashiva mutsakot Lene rot asher al rosha Ushnayim zetim aleha Echad min min hagula Vechad al smola Van vomar el hamalach Hadover be lay more, ma ele adoni. Vayan hamalach, hadover be vayomer elai. Halo yadata ma he ma ele, vaumar lo adoni. Vayan vayomer elai lay more. Said Devar Adonai, El Zerubavel Lemor, Lo Vachayu, Lo Vachoach, Ki Im Beruchi, Amar Adonai Tzivaot, Miata Har Haga 
Leaf nays a ruba vela me shore. Vahotsi et ha evan ha rosha. Tissue old. Chain chain la. Baruch atad anai. Eloheinu melech haolam. Tzur kal haolamim. Tzadik bochal hadarod. Ha'el hanemon. Ha'omer oseh. Hamda berum kayem. Shekal levarav emet vatzedek. Neman atahu. Adonai Eloheinu. Benemarim devarecha. Vadavar echad midvarecha. Achor lo yashuv rekam. Ki el melech neman v'rachaman ata baruch ata adonai ha'el haneman b'chal devarav rachem al tzion ki hivet ha'yenu v'la luvat nefesh toshia b'mhe rav yamenu baruch ata adonai misameach tzion b'maneha Sam Chaynu Adonai Oheynu Beliyahu Hanavi Avdecha Uv Malchut Beit David Meshichecha Bim Heira Yavo Vyagir Libenu Al Kisolo Yeshev Zar Velo Yinchalu Orachiri Met Kivodo Ki Vishen Kachecha Nishbata Lo Shelo Yich Benero Lo Lam Vared Baruch Ata Adonai Magain David Al Hatorah, Al Havodah, Al Hanvim, Vayarom Hashabat Hazer, Shana Tatalanu, Adonai Eloheinu, Lik du Shavalim Nucha, Lichavod Ulti Faret, Al Hakol, Adonai Eloheinu, Anachnu Modim Lach, Umvarchim Otach, Yitbarech Shimcha, Bafi Chachai, Tamid lo lam vared, Baruch ata Adonai. Mikadesh ha-shabbat, Amen. My Torah portion is called Bechalotecha and comes from the Book of Numbers. This portion tells about how Miriam and Aaron slandered their brother, brother Moses. Miriam's punishment for gossiping was the terrible disease of leprosy. A question one might ask is, why wasn't Aaron given leprosy? Maybe because he was male. Maybe because Miriam slandered more. Or maybe because Aaron was just added to the story. Miriam was punished because of gossiping, her evil use of words. How do words affect people? What power do words have? In my Torah portion, the evil use of words was taken very seriously. But in a sixth grade class, a person gossips like it's no big deal, no harm done. In fact, gossiping even brings you into the in crowd. Besides popularity, why do people gossip? To fulfill their own needs or to cover up their insecurities? Is this wrong? I know it is, yet most of us have gossiped at one time or another. Miriam was punished with leprosy. How are we punished? It seems to me that when one gossips, one always pays for it. For example, we've all known a person who is the leader of a social group. This person keeps her leadership by saying bad things about others. Other people follow her because they are afraid that she will talk about them too. After a while, this person loses her position, and because she has gossiped so much, she is left isolated and alone. Like Miriam, her gossiping forced her out of the community. Moses' response to Miriam's disease of leprosy was to pray to God, heal my sister. God replied by saying, she shall be shut up and without camp for seven days. The people at the camp waited for Miriam and did not journey till her return. When she returned, she was well again and all was forgiven. A big part of good communication is a righteous response when something bad occurs or is said. An example of a good response is when in my Torah portion, Miriam gossips about Moses. And instead of Moses being rude and defensive, he prays for God to heal her. One example of a bad response is the riots in Los Angeles. 
I'm not at all stating that the jury's decision to acquit the four policemen who beat Rodney King was at all reasonable, but to start killing and destroying things is not exactly a good response to the problem. In my Hop Torah, the prophet Zechariah shares his visions. In one of the visions, he saw a candlestick of gold with a bowl on the top with seven candlesticks. On either side were the ol two olive trees. He asked the angel, what are these? The angel replied, it was a message from God which meant, not by might and not by power, but by my spirit will peace come. This means that instead of responding to things in a forceful and powerful way, like gossiping, we must learn to respond in a way that will not hurt anyone. When I think of how this message applies to my life, there are many examples I could give. An example I could give that touched all of our hearts was when Rodney King's response to the verdict. He did not agree with the violent response. Rather, he responded like Moses did. He asked for healing and justice in a peaceful way. My Torah and Haftarah portions call us to be of good spirit and to respond to things peacefully. Oh. Am <laughs> I've spent a lot of time thinking about what I can say to you today about your bat, on your bat mitzvah, uh, what blessing I can give to you, but I think you have every blessing known to man and to God already. Um, you've been an incredible blessing in my life. You've brought me so much joy and so much joy into the life of our family and into the lives of so many people. Many of them are here today. Since you were a very little girl, people have always been drawn to you. You never knew a stranger. It's your openness, your charm, brightness, and lovability that draws people to you. It was there from the beginning. Your sensitivity and compassion and intuitive wisdom have always astounded me. Like I said when you were a baby, and my mother thought I was completely crazy, you have definitely been here before. You have always known way too much. <laughs> and I have always learned a great deal from you. As we stand here today, celebrating your bat mitzvah and all that that symbolizes, your entry into womanhood, I am intensely proud and amazed. You've never ceased to amaze me. From snapping your fingers on your first birthday, <laughs> to walking around standing on your head as a toddler, to doing cartwheels in the yard at three years old that finally forced me to sign you up for gymnastics because our neighbors made me. <laughs> your love for learning, your intense curiosity, your talent, your search for excellence in all of your endeavors have been a constant wonder. I don't know where you got this drive for perfection. <laughs> God has blessed you with many, many gifts that you handle with grace and humility. You have never squandered your gifts. You have utilized them fully, never really knowing or appreciating all that you are. But how could you? You're only 12 and a half. They say good things come in small packages, and that's so true for you. I have no doubt that you will make great, great contributions in your life to individuals and to humanity because of who you are. You already have. When you were eight years old, you told me about a psych-out game you played with your dad. You said no one guessed your answers to the question of what are the three most important things in life. I can't imagine why no one guessed it was you. Your answer was peace, love, and accomplishments. That reveals a lot about Emily Neiman, the person. Like I said to you and your brothers one night at dinner a few years ago, I hope I can be like you when I grow up. You make me very proud to be your mother, and I love you, as you would say, too much.
from I? What to say, how to capture you. I'm not as lucky as most of you all here who've known this incredible creature for most of her life. I've only known her for three years. And it's no exaggeration to say you've been a shooting star in my life, Emily Neiman. I remember when I first met Emily, I had been told by her father that I should expect somebody who was beautiful and energetic and warm and, and loving and you were all those things, but nothing prepared me for you getting up in the middle of the meal, in the middle of the restaurant, and sitting on his lap and singing a Broadway show <laughs> song, and then singing the counter melody to that song. I figured that you were pretty special then, and never have I ceased to believe, been amazed and delighted by how special you are, Emily. All of the neat memories that I share with you, like flossing our teeth together with all the girls and going to the gymnastics meets where my hands were as sweaty as yours, and going shopping for couches and shoes and blouses and anything, as long as it was shopping, <laughs> that was fine. Singing going to the chapel, you were the most wonderful maid of honor that anybody's ever had at her wedding. You were beautiful and poised. When I try and think of the essence of Emily, I, I think of two months ago when we were at the Ritz-Carlton Tea Room. No one has ever enjoyed tea like Emily. Every sip had to be savored and every bite of the scones and the dessert. And, he, and you even had to drag me into the bathroom to show me all of the beautiful marble and crystal in there. Emily, that joy of life, that willingness to experience, I think, is one of the greatest gifts that you have brought me and the world. You're walking from your childhood into your adult life, and I have to tell you that I regret seeing you stop being a little girl, because you're the best little girl I've ever seen. And yet I also feel very privileged to be able to watch you step into the beauty of your womanhood. The beauty that's already really obvious. And, and I don't just mean this physical beauty. With parents like this, she could hardly not be beautiful. But I want to speak to the beauty here in your head, in your heart, in your soul, which is so radiant and has touched me very deeply. And I wish you well. And I wish that you get a chance to really talk to a lot of people and give them that gift also, Emily. I love you so much. But I'm not done. I know that you've been getting ready for this day today <clears throat> in one way or another in many, many ways for many years. But in the last year and a half, because I've heard a lot about it, you've suffered a lot as you got ready for this. You did a great job. But you're not the only one who has suffered. I have suffered also. Anybody who knows me and has been around me in the last six months knows that during every spare minute, I have been working on my part of your bat mitzvah, which was a frame for your certificate. And Susan was nice enough to ask me to give this to you oh my God. as a part of my blessing. Thank you. I love you. It's a cross stitch. It's very Twelve and a half years ago, any of these same people gathered at your Gagi's house to celebrate your birth and to witness your naming ceremony. At that time, I held you in my arms and I told you the nature of the people in the room and of the family and community that you were born into. The best and the brightest is how I referred to them. And this is part of what I said. My beloved little daughter, you are truly blessed, for as I look around this room, I see people who care enough about themselves, about each other, about the world, to really make a difference, to constantly challenge themselves, to stay aware, to remain conscious, to strive for excellence, the best and the brightest. And my hope for you, my Emily, I went on to say, is that you will learn from them, grow with them, emulate them, for they are a very special group of people filled with love and wisdom and sensitivity, the best and the brightest, your family and friends. Oh, I am? I didn't know just who I was talking to back then. 
How could I have known what an old soul you were? How could I have known how gifted, how sensitive, how special you are? If any of you out there don't know how this little lady is so special, you may not know about uh, the way her spirit glows or the way she starts laughing and then makes everybody laugh with her just from laughing or, or how she'll She'd probably sing all day long if we let her. <laughs> She's an amazing bundle of, of energy, spirit, sunshine, music, and muscle. She melts hearts and brightens lives. She's absolutely 100% fun to be with, whether you're 4, 14, or 44. I've never spent one boring minute with Emily. And beyond all the accolades she has received for her athletic and uh, academic and musical talents, she seems to be universally loved by everybody who teaches or coaches her. I want to read to you from a note that Emily received a year ago from a teacher who had her for one year in music and then was moving away. Dear Emily, what a task I have chosen for myself. I wish to pen a tribute to you and our relationship, but I'm finding it beyond words. Emily, I am so proud to have known you through my work at Glenridge. I've never in my life been so fortunate to know such an intelligent, kind, talented, consistent, and together young lady. The drive and focus you possess at this point in your life are rare indeed. That drive and focus will see you go far in your life. I truly regret that I won't be able to see you myself but I do expect to hear great and wonderful things about you in the future. I don't want this to be the end of our relationship. I expect to maintain contact with you, but in the event that we are unable to do so, I will always cherish my memories of you, your sense of humor, your caring, and your concern and your heart. You've got it, kid. The sentiments in this note are not unusual. We've heard it over and over again from so many people. And so I, I think back at what I said 12 and a half years ago, and I have to laugh. There I was telling you about the best and the brightest. You who have redefined those, those standards for me. You who have brightened so many lives and, and been the best at so many things. Today, you've made us so proud and I'm sure you'll make, you've made us proud in the past and you'll make us proud for years to come. Before I sit down, I have two wishes for you. And I want you to really listen to me because this is from my heart to your heart and you can just forget they're here, okay? This is just you and me. Here's my two wishes. The first one is that you never ever lose that sense of humor of yours. Sometimes when you get older, things seem to get so serious and people worry about so many things. And if you can keep that childlike spontaneity, then you're going to get through it all really well. And the other part of that is I hope you'll remain silly. I really do. I hope that in striving to be cool and neat like everybody does, that you won't remember, you'll remember that, 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 that you're still silly too, because that's a really important thing. Even when people are watching, even when people are there and you're expected to be cool. Will you try to do that? So to commemorate that trying, I'd like you to play a couple of bars from the other instrument besides the flute that you play. <laughs> <laughs> you just said. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> Bing! Ah. <laughs> <laughs> That's enough. <laughs> My last wish for you is this. My little cuckoo wuku. <laughs> The experiences of your past have helped you reach for the stars. Today you shine radiantly in all our hearts. As it is and as it has been, may your future continue to be the best and the brightest. I love you.
ואני ושמחי בת ציון, כי הנני בא ושכנתי בתוכך נאום אדוני. The words of your half tower start, sing and rejoice, O daughter of Zion, for I will come and then I will dwell in your midst. Well, you've sang, and with the help of the congregation and your family and friends, we continue to rejoice in the challenge that you've taken on, the care which you have used to prepare, and also in the celebration of the Sabbath together. Your portion we really struggled with, Emily, for a long time. First, we thought we'd talk about Miriam because she was a woman who we really aren't, isn't very understood in the Torah. You know, we know the important things she does, but it wasn't just Miriam we had to talk. It was that the reason for her punishment. And we kind of, it took a long time to get to what really to speak about. And I think your mom struggled with it and we struggled with it. And I think you came out with a really important message for everyone. But I looked at your portion again because I, I wanted to remember why it was so hard to focus. And then I looked at the portion and there were so many different things in that portion. Started out with the menorah, you know, speaking about light and how to bring light into the sanctuary. And then it spoke about how uh, Moses had to share the inspiration with the 70 elders. And what did that mean? The rabbis asked, does that mean that God gave extra inspiration to those 70 elders? Or they asked, did Moses have to take some of his inspiration and give it to those 70 elders so that he would have less? That was a big question for the rabbis. And then, of course, we come to the place where Miriam and, you know, I hope everybody heard the questions that Emily asked. Why was Miriam punished? It was Miriam and Aaron that spoke gossip about Moses and his wife. You know, was he just added to the story? I think that was a great question. In other words, Emily was trying to find the truth. And I think that's how these different parts of the portion are connected. The bringing of light to the sanctuary, the bringing of truth. The bringing of inspiration, not only to Moses, the prophet, but to all the people so that everyone could have a little bit more knowledge about what was true. And then, of course, Miriam going back and forth. Is it true to gossip? Was it not true? We really don't know if what she said about Zipporah, Moses' wife, was true or not. But we know it was something she shouldn't have said. And she had to pay for it. She was punished for it. So really, your portion is a seeking of truth. So sing, O daughter, it says. Sing the words of truth, and God will dwell among us. It was the blessing from your brothers. <coughs> your brothers said one of your gifts is that, like it or not, Emily tells the truth <laughs> and is authentic. And we can trust her. And somehow that is a very precious gift. We've heard about a lot of your gifts. But I think the portion is trying to tell us that this is something that we must all look at. And perhaps this is one of the lessons for your life, too. And, and that's why it was your portion. That there are times in our lives that we really have to seek out the truth in situations. You know, really figure out what's happening, what the truth is, and then decide whether it's time to say it or not. And that also is part of the truth. And I pray for you that um, you will, in your life, as we all will, find ways to sing, O oh sister, O oh daughter of Zion, the truth as you see it, and that there will always be so many loving, caring people to be listening to that truth and to share it with you. And that it will make a difference for you in your life, in facing those things that do happen, and also in the life of all people everywhere. Because we hope that you'll continue to be singing among us, I'd like to ask Sarah Siegel to come forward and give you a presentation from the congregation. 